Chapter Two A Bad Day February 2009 The day started like other days. I enjoyed my job at the Buttered Bun Cafe in Stortford. It was not a posh place. The tables were cheap and red, and most of the pictures on the wall were of Stortford Castle, which was up on the hill behind the cafe. But I liked making the tea in the mornings, with the smell of warm bread and the sound of quiet conversations around me. I liked the customers the most. I liked the old lady who came every day and had one egg and chips. I liked the workmen who came for their lunch. I liked the tourists who stopped on their walk back from the castle and the loud school children who came in after school. Frank owned the cafe. He came from Australia. He was quiet, but I talked a lot, and he liked that. You make the place noisy and happy, he said, and they like your crazy clothes. Working in the buttered bun was like working in a pub, but without the problem of drunk people. But that afternoon, when lunch was finished and we were quiet, something different happened. Frank walked to the door and turned round the closed sign. Sorry, Louisa, he said, but I'm going back to Australia. My dad isn't well, and the castle is going to open its own cafe. Tourists will use the new cafe instead of mine. I sat with my mouth open. I was shocked. I'm sorry about your dad, I said slowly. Then Frank put something in my hand. He is three months' money he said, and I'll give you a good reference, of course. We close tomorrow. He's only given you three months' money, shouted Dad, while my mother put a cup of tea in my hands. Well, that's good of him. When did you start working there? Six years ago. I knew why Dab was worried. My family really needed the money that the cafe paid me. My sister, Trina, who I shared a bedroom with, was paid very little from her job at the flower shop. And she was going to start college soon. So that meant even less money was going to come into the house. Mum could not work because she had to look after Grandad, who also lived with us. Grandad was old and often got ill. Dad worked in a factory that made furniture, and he knew that the business was not doing well and that he might be made redundant. I often heard my parents talking quietly about money. She'll have to go to the job centre tomorrow, Mum said. She's clever. You're clever, aren't you, Lou? Maybe she can train to do office work. I sat quietly as my parents talked about the different jobs that I could do. For the first time, I felt like crying. I went to find my boyfriend, Patrick, at the running club. He always trained there in the evenings, from Mondays to Thursdays. I found him running round the track. Run with me, he said. I began running next to him. I got bored at home, I said. Mum's busy and Dad's sleeping because he's working during the night this week. 
Shall we go to the cinema? Sorry, but I've got to train. You need to get another job as soon as possible, he said. I only left the cafe 24 hours ago, I replied, breathing hard. Can't I relax for one day? Patrick had a personal training business with an office and two cars. He was making a lot of money and he liked telling me about it. He was running faster than me and he began to move ahead of me. You need to get a better job, he shouted over his shoulder. You can change your life now, Lou. You can go to college or train to do something different. You can't just sit around at home. Put on a suit and go to the job centre. Or I'll train you to work with me. The next day, I went to the job centre. There was a 45-minute interview with a man called Syed. I got a week of work at a chicken factory. Then I worked for two weeks at a burger restaurant. But they told me what to say. Every time a customer came in, I had to ask questions like, How are you today? And, Would you like large fries with that? And not say other things. But I spoke to the customers like a normal person and joked with them so the restaurant told me to leave. I went back to the job centre for my third interview. Syed sat opposite me. There aren't many jobs left. You wrote that you like working with people and talking to them. So how do you feel about becoming a care assistant? He said looking at his computer. You won't have to look after lots of old people, he added quickly. You'll work for a family. You will be helping in someone's house. They only live two miles from your home. It says, care and company for a disabled man. Can you drive? Yes, I said. Do I have to, you know, wash him and help him go to the toilet? No, Syed replied. He's a quadriplegic and he's got a nurse. He needs someone there in the day to feed him, look after him and talk to him. He needs help when he wants to go out and with anything he can't do for himself. The money is good. Will you go for the interview? It was a question, but we both knew the answer. <laughs>